JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 10th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar continued trading lower against the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. It lost the most ground versus uh, Aussie, SEC, New Zealand dollar, franc and the euro in that order while it under underperformed the list against the uh, NOG and the Canadian dollar. Now the strengthening of uh, the risk-linked currencies Aussie and QE points to another round of uh, risk appetite, but the fact that the Swiss franc was uh, the fourth winner in line suggests otherwise. Thus we will turn our gaze to the equity world for getting a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment. Here EU indices closed in the green, perhaps as uh, France's new coronavirus deaths eased and Spain's uh, new infections slowed, or it could be due to Eurogroup chairman Mario Centeno say, saying that EU finance ministers are close to overcoming differences over a rescue package. Sentiment was uh, boosted uh, further near the EU close after the FOMC announced another round of stimulus with investors shrugging off uh, another 6.61 million jump in the US initial jobless claims. Now under this new 2.3 trillion US dollars program, the Fed will uh, work with commercial banks in order to to offer four-year loans to small businesses and directly buy bonds and bonds of uh, states and more populous countries and cities. The relative uh, upbeat morale uh, rolled over into the US session with all three of Wall Street's main indices opening higher. That said, although they closed in positive territories, they came off uh, their highs following the outcome of the OPEC Plus video conference meeting. The group uh, decided to cut output by 10 million barrels per day with another 5 million suggested to come, uh, suggested to come from nations uh, outside, uh, outside the group, including the United States. Uh, the, they also said that the final agreement was dependent on uh, Mexico getting on board after the nation appeared reluctant to proceed with the asked uh, cuts. Oil prices tumbled on the announcement, uh, perhaps uh, on a sell the fact response, as such cuts were already priced in. Remember last week both uh, Brent and WTI skyrocketed on rumors that Saudi, and Saudi Arabia and Russia will agree on a 10 to 15 million um, barrels per, per day, uh, million barrels per day output reduction. It could also be that such cuts were not seen enough to offset the 30 million barrels per day tumble in global uh, fuel demand due to the coronavirus outbreak, or it could be that investors stayed nervous on uh, the condition of other producers uh, joining in. US officials have already said that uh, US production will fall on its own in two years' time, but they have not committed to any cuts yet. Maybe that was the reason behind the mixed results in Asian equities uh, this morning. Although Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's uh, KOSPI are up 138 and 131% respectively, Japan's Nikkei closed virtually unchanged while China's Shanghai Composite is down 0.96%. This may have also prevented uh, the oil-related currencies uh, cut and knock to perform as good as the other commodity-linked currencies, uh, Aussie and Kiwi. The Canadian dollar may have also felt the heat of uh, Canada's disappointing jobs data for March. Now, yesterday's uh, OPEC plus talks will be followed by another call today between G20 energy ministers, and it remains to be seen whether other producers uh, outside the OPEC plus group will be willing to continue to, co to 
will be willing to, contrib to contribute with an extra 5 million barrels per day reduction. If so, oil prices may experience a relief bounce, but uh, this is unlikely to result in a trend, a trend reversal in our view. After all, oil, trader oil traders so showed their uh, dissatisfaction over the new deal yesterday, pushing the black gold uh, lower. If indeed the new cuts are not enough to support prices, we wouldn't be surprised if we see WTI and Brent trading back below the 20 and 25 uh, marks re respectively uh, again soon. Back to the virus saga and our view of it. We stick to our guns that even if uh, market sentiment remains supported for a while more due to the FOMC's uh, new stimulus measures, we would be reluctant to trust a long-lasting recovery. Yesterday, although infected cases around uh, the globe slowed somewhat, as you can see on the graph here, deaths accelerated to close their uh, to, uh, accelerated close to their daily to their daily record. This is the daily record. You can see that we are close to that uh, peak. Thus, we believe that it is too early to call for a peak in the pace of the virus spreading. Just a day of uh, new records in cases and deaths may be enough to spark fresh fears and prompt investors to abandon uh, risk-linked assets in favor of safe havens. Even if we have already hit that peak, we expect deaths to start slowing with lag compared to the cases, which makes us believe that uh, the lockdown measures should be extended for a while more if indeed governments uh, worldwide want to contain the fast-spreading virus. What's more, as we know that recently, the economic wounds could well drag more than previously anticipated. Even if we get a free movement permission in the next months, many people may still be reluctant to get out of their homes and start spending. Now, as for today's events, uh, today is uh, Good Friday in most uh, nations under our radar and thus uh, the respective markets will be closed. With regards to the data, we only get the US CPIs for March. The headline rate is expected to have fallen to 1.6% year over year from 2.3%, while the core rate is anticipated to have ticked down to 2.3% year over year from 2.4%. The case for the headline rate to fall more than the core one is supported by the year over year change in WTI which slid further into the negative territory. Let's not forget that the difference uh, between the headline and the core CPIs is uh, volatile items like energy. Now, we also have two speakers on today's agenda, uh, Cleveland uh, Fed President Loretta Mester and Fed Board Governor Radal Quarles. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested uh, in uh, learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 uh, o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT just fair and direct.